kind of a chair and situation, because let's face it, with the crisis in the Middle East, in my ethnic background, I should not be seen with girls from Egypt. <laughs> if people get the wrong impression, you think the performers have a ball where you relax and have a good time, because you see this kind of introduction and what have you. And believe me, it's not fun. I'll tell you, have you got a minute? I'll tell you who's got the racket in television. The repairman. Now, let's face it. I had a little trouble with my color television set. You know the NBC Peacock? Instead of going like that, it went like this. <laughs> so the repairman came over and he hit me with a great line, it must go into the shop. And four days later, you call this guy up and he's doing so good. You know, all television repairmen, they're doing so great, they have their own language. Now you say, how's my set doing? He says, gee, Mr. Melvin, we had to disconnect your PDQ condenser because it was let out from the DCAC2. And we had to put in a whole new TTJ to make sufficient the CN board. As it holds the B-I-L-L. -L. He said, $23 COD. That I understand. And now that I have your attention, there's another guy I like to talk about. The druggist. Now, no performer, let alone comic, has ever talked about this guy, and what has made him a sacred cow is beyond my comprehension. Now, there isn't a person that's watching and listening that has never had a prescription filled. Now, you walk into the druggist, and you give the pharmacist the white piece of paper. Do you ever notice what he does with it? He runs about a back of the counter about 15 feet away, and he always yells out, come back in an hour. What does he have to do in an hour? All he has to do is take the pills out of a big bottle and put them into a small bottle. You know, it takes an hour stuffing the cotton into the small bottle. <laughs> and he can't type. And all the instructions are always the same. Take one pill every three hours, which is correct. It takes you that long to get the cotton back out of the small bottle. <laughs> and then when you pick up your miracle pills, just six miracle pills, he looks you right in the eye and says, $12. I said, gift wrap them. <laughs> With this kind of money, I don't swallow pills. I get a piece of devil floss and make a necklace out of it. I think they've gone nuts with miracle pills as is. You hear what they're doing with LSD? They dip it in ink now. So when you take a trip, you could write home. <laughs> then there's another guy I like to talk about. And if you drive a car, we'll have a complete report. I talk and refer to the car mechanic. Now, let's face it. The majority of us know nothing about cars. Some guys are fortunate. A small minority. They could open up a hood of a car. They tinker around. The car goes. I'm not like that. In order for me to open up the hood of my car, I must hit a wall. <laughs> hey, for years, I thought the E in the gas gauge meant excellent. <laughs> but don't misunderstand. Have you got another minute? <laughs> don't misunderstand me. I'm not a complete dummy. I've been driving for 18 years now. I picked up a few tricks. When I drive into a gas station, I know what to yell out. I yell out things like, check the air in the ashtrays. <laughs> Fill her up. That's correct. You always say, fill her up. You always call a car a her. That's what car mechanics do. And let's face it, gentlemen, they happen to be correct. Anything that takes you for a ride <laughs> gives you that much trouble and costs you so much money has got to be a her. <laughs> and you ever notice while he's filling your gas tank, he walks around the car. And he says, how is she doing? No, I'm in no particular rush to go anywhere, so I figured I'll get into a conversation. I says, well, she's making sound. Now this genius is going to give you an interview. What kind of sounds? I said, I don't know, she goes clunk, clunk. He said, clunk, clunk, huh? Sounds like your points. You sure you don't mean clink, clink? I said, no, clunk. He said, hey, there's a big difference between clink and clunk. I said, oh, I know. Clunk is the past tense of clink. He said, let's give the car a little spin. You ever notice when these guys give the car a little spin, it isn't this quiet when you park it. He says, but let's leave it in the shop. I said, what was that? He says, let's leave it in the shop. I says, wait a minute. Did you ever repair television sets? <laughs> now, four days later, you come up to pick up your car, and he gives you a bill for $38. Eight cents is for the part. The rest is for labor. A brain surgeon doesn't get this kind of money. Then he hits you with another great line. Gee, Mr. Melvin, you're lucky five more miles. You would have been in a lot of trouble. You know what he means? Five more miles, he would have been in a lot of trouble. I would have been in another gas station. <laughs> he says, we had to replace a part. We did put a new part in. And somebody one time gave me a piece of advice, which I gladly, you got a minute? <laughs> which I gladly pass along to everyone watching and listening. When a mechanic tells you that, always make sure you get the old part back. And that way you're sure you got a new part in the car. And I said to the guy, let me have the old part. And he was halfway legitimate. He gave me the old part. 
I took the old pot, I threw it in the trunk of my car with the rest of the old pots. <laughs> then I realized why my car makes sounds. <laughs> it's all the old pots rolling around in the trunk of my car. <laughs> hey, you're a wonderful audience. And let's face facts. If you ever see me work, you know I base my entire approach to show business on one thought. It always takes two things to make a show, the performer and the audience. And no performer could do a good show without a good audience. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, while you were judging me, I was judging you. <laughs> no, don't laugh or applaud. It's too late for that. <laughs> you reached your decision, and I reached mine. So before I go, as I do with every audience, I like to give you a rating. And 65% is the passing mark. And I like to give this audience a rating of 81 which is good. I took off the 19 points, and I must tell you why. As I looked in this audience, I happened to spot my druggist, <laughs> my television repairman, and my car mechanic. Thank you. You know, I, I was real honored a few weeks back to have Mr. Orson Welles as my guest. And that night, Orson recited something from Shakespeare, and... I never saw so much mail. Yeah, a, a lot of you folks wrote in to tell us how much you enjoyed Orson, and I agree with you. So tonight, I've asked Orson to repeat it all for you and for me. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Orson Welles. 